Good evening, everyone. We begin tonight keeping him honest on bullying in America. Yet again, another teen has taken his own life, according to his parents, after being bullied for years. A 14-year-old boy this time. Time and time again on this program, we've reported on the problem of bullying in this country, and time and time again, we've announced the deaths of children. Children who should not be dead. Children whose loneliness and desperation, not just in the last few minutes of their life, but often in the years leading up to their deaths, is simply heartbreaking to imagine. This is Jamie Rodemeyer, just 14 years old, a freshman at Williamsville North High School in Buffalo, New York. Jamie routinely blogged about his troubles. Just 11 days ago, he wrote something online. He said, I always say how bullied I am, but no one listens. What do I have to do so people will listen? One week later, this past Sunday, Jamie committed suicide. Now, often when kids die, there's no record of their pain. There's no record of what they've been through, of their suffering. But Jamie did leave us a message. Months ago, he posted a message on YouTube as part of the It Gets Better project, a program to spread messages of hope to suicidal lesbian, gay, and bisexual children. Even in his sadness, Jamie was reaching out to help others. This is Jamie Rodemeyer in his own words. Hi, this is Jamie from Buffalo, New York. And I'm just here to tell you that it does get better. Uh, here's a little bit of my story. Um, um, December 2010, I thought I was bi. And then I always got made fun of because I virtually have no guy friends. And I only have friends that are girls. And it bothered me because people would be like, faggot bag, and they'd taught me in the hallways and I felt like I could never escape it and I made a form spring which I should have done and people would just constantly send me hate telling me that gay people go to hell Jamie says he constantly got messages hate messages on the social networking site form spring which is a site which allows kids to send anonymous messages to each other but back then as you hear he, he says he rose above the negativity here's more of what Jamie had to say and um, I just want to tell you that it does get better because when I came out for being bi, I got so much support from my friends and it made me feel so secure. And then if your friends or family isn't even there for you, I look up to one of the most supporting people of the gay community that I think of, that I know, uh, Lady Gaga. She makes me so happy and she lets me know that I was born this way. And that's my advice to you from her. You were born this way. And all you have to do is hold your head up far. Hold your head up and you'll go far. Because that's all you have to do. Just love yourself and your set. Love yourself and your set. And now here's the last part of his message, perhaps the most chilling. I promise you will get better. I have so much support from people I don't even know online. I know that sounds creepy, but... They're so nice and caring, and they don't ever want me to die. They don't ever want me to die. Jamie Rodemeyer, last May, last Sunday, he took his own life. He was 14 years old. Now, we do know at Jamie's school they did have some type of bullying prevention program. It's unclear how extensive it was. A lot of schools across the country have programs like that, and more and more states are enacting new anti-bullying laws for schools. But there are some organizations and lawmakers who say all of this isn't needed. Organizations like Focus on the Family, who say some anti-bullying efforts are actually just ways to promote a so-called gay agenda. Candy Cushman, an education analyst for the group, posted this on truetolerance.org. Quote, what parents need to be aware of is there are activist groups who want to promote homosexuality to kids because they realize if they can capture hearts and minds of our children at the earliest ages, they will have for all practical purposes won the clash of values that we are currently experiencing. Then there's Robert Newman, head of the California Christian Coalition. His group is planning to fight new legislation signed by Governor Jerry Brown that adds sexual orientation to the state's existing anti-discrimination laws and compels schools to teach lesbian and gay and transgendered history alongside history of other ethnic and minority groups. Here's Mr. Newman, what he said this past weekend about bullying at the California Republican Party Convention in Los Angeles. We found this on thinkprogress.org. It's part of growing up 
life is part of maturing. It's not something in which I engaged. I grew up in a Christian home. I didn't engage in that kind of behavior. People were, were people. We knew they were unusual behaviors. But we went on with life. But did you, I you, hardly think that bullying is a real issue in schools. There's no reason to have a special bill for, let's say, 3% of the population, period. Well, Newman is not alone in that thinking. In Kentucky, House Bill 370 would prohibit bullying because of a student's sexual orientation, race, or religion. A state lawmaker named Mike Harmon is fighting the bill. Listen. Someone you know, just in conversation said, well, you know, I think homosexuality is a sin. Well, we don't want that child to be bullied because they have a certain moral or religious belief. And we don't want, certainly don't want them to be labeled a bully just because they have that particular belief. And let's not forget the civil rights investigation going on in Minnesota's largest school district, Anoka Hennepin, outside Minneapolis. The U.S. Justice Department is investigating several incidents involving bullying and harassment. The community is embattled in a culture war over homosexuality in the classroom. Joining me now is Rosalind Wiseman, author of Queen Bees and Wannabes, the best-selling book that inspired the 2002 movie Mean Girls. Also with us tonight, Rachel Simmons, who wrote the book Odd Girl Out. So, Rosalind, you, you say you know Jamie Rodemeyer. How so? Well, when I saw the video, um, of course, my heart just broke. It reminds me of so many kids that I work with. And I've got, you know, kids right now that I'm emailing and talking to and their parents. And, you know, one day they feel that they can make it and they've got the strength to get by. And then the next day they feel that they can't. And I think that's the thing that we see. And it's so amazing to me that people don't, and, and parents and adults, that we just heard from don't understand and can't understand that parents when they look at their own kids that they've got experiences and pain in school or in their lives and the parents might not know or feel out of control to actually make their kids safe and what I don't understand is why adults that we heard from don't get this because our kids are really in pain and we've got to be able to be there for them Rachel to those who say that bullying is just a teenage rite of passage what, what do you say I say that and has never been to a school or certainly not recently. We live in a country where 60,000 kids stay home every day because they're too afraid to go to school. And uh, anybody who spends time in a school and talks to kids knows that there is a culture both of everyday cruelty but also of protracted campaigns uh, that kids cannot escape. And when there are no rules at schools, when there's no consciousness and when there's a denial of the problem, uh, kids cannot be safe and they cannot study. Rosalind, there are those who say, and we, we just heard from some of them on the program, who say, look, uh, you know, this is a way to, um, to spread the, the uh, homosexuality or acceptance of homosexuality in schools throughout the country. And some parents are saying, look, I, I don't feel comfortable with that. Well, I think that's ridiculous because we are not, when we talk about kids being safe from bullying, we are not talking about a pro-homosexual agenda unless a pro-homosexual agenda is, is that we think that all children deserve to be treated with dignity. And if that is the pro-homosexual agenda, then I, as a straight person, are, I am completely for it. And I would hope that we would all be behind that kind of agenda. So to think that we can in any way be against kids being safe for some kind of so-called agenda besides kids being safe, makes absolutely no sense and I believe that adults in every way when we have kids that we are that are important to us that we have relationships with that we've got to get behind the politics beyond the politics of this and look at our children and be able to go where they are and to be useful to them and meaningful to them so they can trust us that we can be safe for them but, but Rosalind I mean, there is the idea of the school district in Minnesota where they have what they call a, a neutrality policy where, the, right. where, the, where they're not using specific words of, of gay or, or lesbian, you say that's not effective. Well, it's not only not effective, it's actually totally counterproductive to everything that Rachel just said. Because neutrality in the face of, uh, the, of an abuse of power is not neutrality. It is siding with the bully. So if you're going to believe in a, what's so-called a neutrality policy, what you're really believing is a way for kids to go after other kids Chuck, and do no nothing idea. about it. Uh, Rachel, um, do you agree with that, that, that you have to use these terms, that, it, you, that neutrality doesn't work, or so-called neutrality doesn't work? I do think neutrality doesn't work. Um, I find the whole thing shocking. I mean, we don't send American workers to their workplaces in this country saying, just do your job and we're not going to protect you if something happens to you. 
likewise, we can't send children to school in this country assuming that we're just going to teach you and we're not going to protect you if something happens to you. These are children. We're not educating uh, part of the child. We have to be mindful of the whole child if we really want to do justice to our education, our education system and to the young citizens of our country. And but I, ahead, I also Rosa. think what's happening is, and you heard it in one of the clips, is that, and I believe it was the politician from Kentucky, which is that he is saying, if I have this correctly, that the children who are bullying, if they believe that homosexual, homosexuality is wrong and that's their value system, then they should be allowed to express that against other students. And what that means is, is that they are able to be mean and cruel to other students. And that is an extraordinary thing to say. What you're saying is these values that we think are so important and are Christian, which I know many Christian people who don't believe this whatsoever, that those values enable children to bully other children and justify and reinforce the notion that it's okay to bully other children. It is unbelievable that that would be the case coming from our leaders and from adults that our children need to be able to depend on to be safe at school. Uh, I want to point out we invited Mike Harmon to be on the program. We didn't hear back from him. R Rachel, next month uh, we're going to air a special report on bullying where we've actually hired a sociologist to study study in a particular school why kids bully one another. And, and what they found is that LGBT kids are actually victimized at a higher rate than the regular student population or perceive, or kids who are perceived to be LGBT. Is that in line with other research out there? Uh, absolutely. I mean, what we see is that the word gay, particularly among boys, but certainly among girls too, is used as a substitute for anything that's weird or stupid or odd but it's also used to punish kids who don't live up to masculinity or femininity. And for kids, particularly in middle school, fitting in, being like everyone else is so important. And these words are used to stigmatize um, over and over again. You ask any boy or girl, what is the most common word used to shame someone? And it's very often gonna be the word gay. It also seems, Rosalind, uh, to be the one uh, derogatory term that teachers still kind of accept or just ignore. I mean, if someone was using the N word, they would be hauled in front of the principal's office or talked to, um, but, but calling someone, you know, the F word, th they get a pass. Right, but I think it's also about teachers not being given the tools to know how to do that. So if you're a math teacher, for example, and this is what I do when I teach teachers, I say to them, look, you don't have to show a documentary. You don't have to do all of, you don't have to be a, do a big class. You're a math teacher. You need to be teaching math. But when children are putting each other down, if somebody says, you know, and uses the word gay to put somebody down, all you say is, Mark, you may not use that word to put somebody down in my classroom. Are we good? Are we done? Good. And you move on. It takes 15 seconds and every kid in that classroom knows that you are a safe teacher, you are a fair teacher, and that you care for the safety of every kid in that student, in uh, that classroom. Rosalind and Rachel, I appreciate both of you being on. Thank you. We're going to continue to follow this issue here. In fact, we've recently teamed up, as we said, with the Cartoon Network and Facebook to, to try to get at this from all different angles. There's now an app on Facebook where you can pledge to do everything you can to help stop bullying in this country. To find the app, go to facebook.com slash stopbullyingspeakup. Again, that's facebook.com slash stopbullyingspeakup. Join us also for our special series of reports, Bullying. It stops here starting October 9th on CNN.